In this video, I'll be looking at a Monte Carlo method to perform an integration of a function using Microsoft Excel. So the term Monte Carlo method uh, just refers to a technique in which random numbers are used uh, to come up with a numerical solution to a problem. In our case, we're going to integrate a function. So we will start with some function of x, uh, a domain of values for x over which we'll integrate and we'll decide on a number of random points to use. So what we'll do in Excel is we'll actually calculate a rectangle of points generated randomly. Uh, we'll also have to get the range of values for the function. Uh, that will allow us to get the area of the random rectangle and therefore an area per, per point. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll count just the area between the function and the x-axis. Uh, with the understanding that the integration of a function of x is often interpreted as the area under the curve. So for our example, we'll use as the function of x something just linear, uh, minus 0.5x plus 1.5. Our domain will be x from 0 to 8, and we'll fool around with the number of random points, let's just say 10,000. So I have an Excel template uh, with a link to download in the description. And as a start, uh, I've already entered the domain for X, uh, cells B2, C2, and you'll see zero to eight. And we will go through the rest of the uh, method in Excel. So first I wanna set, uh, uh, I wanna calculate random values for X uh, between zero and eight. So using the rand function, which gives you a value, a random number between zero and one, you'll see a mul uh, the formula will multiply by the width uh, of the domain and then just add the beginning of the domain. So if I uh, enter that function and copy paste it down as many points as I like, here's a sample of random numbers. So next I want to evaluate my function of X and in this case, the function we had was minus 0.5 times x plus 1.5. So for x, I'm putting in cell E2. And when I copy that formula and paste it down, it will calculate f of x for each of the randomly generated x values. Uh, notice when I've just entered that function, my random numbers have changed. Every time you enter a cell or recalculate, or the random number recalculates. So now I wanna get the range of values for my function. So I'll just use the max and min functions uh, to get the maximum, maximum and minimum value of column G. So there I am just using max and min. And instead of uh, going from say cell G2 down to say G10,001, if I wanted 10,000 cells, I'm just putting it in G to G, which means the entire column. This way later on I can change, I can fool around with the number of points and see how that affects my simulation. And so there's my max and min values. Next we get the range for y. And this can be different from the range for f of x. Uh, so we need to get a range that goes between the x-axis and the function. To do this, we would, in the lower part of the range, cell B3, we would take the minimum of the function range and zero. This way, if the lowest part of the range of the function is positive, we would be sure to include in our range of Y of our random rectangle points that come from the axis up to the function. Similarly, for the uh, upper limit to the range, we take the max between the function range and zero. And so in this example, the range y turns out to be the same thing as range f of x, but we just needed this step to be sure that we're getting values for our random rectangle that are from the axis to the function. Uh, now within that uh, range of f of x, I wanna use rand again and calculate random y values. So again, the rand function multiplied by the height of the range plus the beginning of the range. 
will get me random values uh, within that range. So enter, copy the formula, paste it down, and you'll see a sample of data there. Uh, now I'm going to use count to determine the number of points I, I have. I want it to have 10,000, but this is something you can play with as you go. So I'll, I'll actually just count them. So I'm basically counting values in column E. And because I went from E2 to uh, E 10,001, uh, that's 10,000 points. Again, if I insert rows or delete rows uh, using the count function, I don't have to worry about uh, remembering how many points I had. And now the uh, area then of the random rectangle is uh, width times height. And so here's my width times my height. And there's my area. And finally, we'll divide the uh, rectangle area by the number of points so that we can assign a certain amount of area per random point. And here's the function. And there we go. So now I'll just uh, move over in the template. I have additional columns uh, for X's and Y's that I will include in my area calculation. So, for example, uh, include a random Y if that Y value is between the X axis and our function. Otherwise, put zero. And here's the function that will do the job. It basically says that if my random Y value is positive and it's also less than my function value, then count it, otherwise zero. Uh, the rest of the function basically says if the random Y value is negative, then it must be greater than the function value, in which case we count it, otherwise zero. So this function only counts the random y value if it's between the x-axis and the function. So here are some values uh, calculated and you'll see that in the cases where y include is zero in column j, uh, for those cases the random y value is not between the x-axis and the function value. And we'll do something similar for x. We'll include the random x value, uh, but in this case, uh, we'll just do that if the included y value is not zero. And so here's our simpler function. Again, we already did the calculation for column j. So for column i, we really just have to check if j is zero, then we're zero. Otherwise, we'll take our random x value in column e. And so here's some values. So now you'll see in column I and J, those uh, when non-zero are points that are being counted in our area calculation. So in the last two columns, uh, we're gonna just count uh, points, but for an integration, right, with the interpretation of area under the curve, uh, we'll take uh, plus one if the included point is actually under the curve and above the x-axis, but minus one if the included point is actually above the function and therefore below the x-axis, otherwise zero. And so here's uh, the formula that, that accomplishes that. And so you'll see, uh, for example, in row four, the included y value is negative, so it's being counted as minus one in the column n under. But row five, the included y is positive, so uh, it's gonna count as a plus one uh, in, our, in the n under column. Now there are times when you wanna count all areas as positive, for example, if you're looking for the distance traveled uh, and you have available to you a velocity versus time uh, function, uh, you would want the area bound between the axis and the function. So sometimes you want to count the areas positive.
So in that case, just always take plus one when counting. And so uh, if we did not count a point so that there's a zero in column L, we'll just stay zero, otherwise plus one. And so here are some values. And for example, row two uh, is an included random point. Uh, but in terms of our integration, uh, we see in column L a negative one because column J has a included Y value that's negative. But if we were counting all area as positive, our column K value is plus one. So finally, we'll actually calculate our integral or area. So what we'll basically do is uh, take the sum of the points, uh, the sum of the values in column L or K, depending on how we want to treat the area as positive or positive and negative, and multiply that by the area per point. So you'll see uh, um, summing column K or L and multiplying by C7, which is our area per, po per point. And here's our calculation then. Now looking at the whole spreadsheet, uh, this is how we filled it out. Uh, just as a check, the uh, integral of minus 0.5x plus 1.5 from zero to eight is minus four. And that shows up in our Monte Carlo uh, spreadsheet uh, in column C, uh, row 10, right, minus 3.963. So it's, it's off, right? It's a numerical estimated calculation. And if we treated uh, all area as positive, then we would have been integrating the absolute value of minus 0.5x plus 1.5, and that would have given us 8.5. And you'll see in, in uh, cell C9, the area is 8.5754, right? So again, it's close, but it's uh, a numerical estimate. It's also interesting to do a scatter plot of columns E and F, uh, which is the first, uh, the, the, the topmost plot that shows our random rectangle. And you can see little spaces, you know, it's, it's not completely filled out. It's randomly filled out. And below that is a, a scatter plot of columns I and J, which is only showing the included values. And so you can see that if each random value has an area associated with it, and you're including only certain points, you can see now more visually the technique that allows us to integrate. So just another look at the scatter plots. If I change the, uh, the domain from zero to two, then you'll see that my Y range is not the same as my function range because I need to start my Y range at zero, not 0 0.5001. If I now go from five to eight, you'll see that the, that the upper limit to my Y range is zero instead of minus one for the function. This is, again, to get values between the axis and the function. And there you have it.